The news review is on now, and uh, my guest this morning, I have Edem Agbana. From the end, and, uh, yesterday was your birthday. Yes. Happy yeah. birthday, had a belated birthday to you. Thank you. Thank how you did, so how much. did you celebrate it? Well, I spent the entire day at home just mm -hmm. responding to messages and calls from friends and family. Uh, the nature of my work is such that you often lose out on uh, staying in touch with very good friends, mm -hmm. mates from junior and senior high schools and all that. So I decided right. to just spend some time with them yesterday. And I, I was amazed with the kind of love shown me on social media, the course and all of that. And I want to say thank you to all of you, including mm -hmm. CT yeah. FM. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get straight into the details of the stories this morning. We're expecting our second guest once he's in. We'll introduce him. And then, of course, we get straight into the issues. Front page of the Daily Graphic says, Obwasi Mine bounces back. Anglo Gold Ashanti pours first gold. I'll take a paragraph or two, and then we can discuss it. Anglo Gold Ashanti's Obwasi Mine Redevelopment Project has produced its first gold after four years of limited operation. The last four years saw the country's flagship mine, which had been in operation for more than 100 years, placed under, quote, care and maintenance, end quote, in the face of its long-held potential to uplift the local economy. Now, in October 2018, a $375 million five-year underground mining contract was finalized with Underground Mining Alliance Limited, a joint venture between African Underground Mining Services and a crab based Rockshore International a Ghanaian mining contractor to revive the mine. Yes, so Adam, the president was in Obuasi yesterday. Of course, the mine ha has bounced back. Uh, it's poured its first gold. First of all, what do you make of the, this news? I think that is great news. Uh, I have always maintained that the very essence of engaging in any political discourse or activities to see development and progress. So it doesn't matter uh, whose era, what project mm -hmm. took place. At, as far as the project is supposed to provide jobs, mm -hmm. increase productivity wow. in the local economy, and also um, increase the standard of living and the quality of life mm -hmm. of the people in a particular area, it's something that we must applaud. I think that the Obuasi mine bouncing back is great news, right. and all of us are happy about it. Uh, when I read the story, I'm told that it's expected to provide about some 2,500 jobs. And knowing how the mining industry works, these are not just going to be jobs for graduates, but we have a chunk of our people. Some have very technical expertise, and that is why when you go to Obuasi and its environs, the way and manner in which some of these young people who even never had the opportunity of having formal education, they engage in galamse, how they operate the machines, their expertise, their experience in all of these things is needed to put the official mining, to put the, 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 the company back on mainstream. So I think that is a good thing. And we must applaud all the stakeholders who contributed to making sure that the company bounces back. For the first time, I'm reading, or you just read a story, that for me is a bit objective mm -hmm. about what had happened to the Obuasi mine. Because otherwise, the impression was that it collapsed under the previous government and some blame <laughs> games were being apportioned. But when you know what happened to Obuasi mine, you realize that in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. they had a lot of challenges facing the Galamsees. Yeah. There was even a point where their communications director, mm -hmm. one John Usu, yeah. was, was, was murdered or was mm -hmm. killed as yeah. a result of some clashes. And the concerns that... Yeah, the um, concerns that... The, 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 their exactly, concessions and all Their security this. personnel withdrew from the company. Mm -hmm. The company itself was making low sales. At yeah. the time, you know that 2013 to 2015, mm -hmm. globally, we had a lower price for, for gold. The company had management issues. Mm -hmm. They were not able to keep up with the capital with the exactly. investment. So when they were going to close down or shut down, they actually mm -hmm. wrote to government and said they wanted to close down mm -hmm. for the period of five years yeah. within which they, they were going to seek for investment mm -hmm. and bring back the company with a much more mechanized or some new technology, technology other yeah. than what they were doing Pretty in the past. So yeah. what happened was purely a technical and a managerial issue. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a matter of one government's ability or inability to keep the company running. So it's a good thing that the company is back and we must mm -hmm. all support it. Apart from the propaganda value that some uh, <laughs> friends in the MPP are trying to add to it, I think that it's a good thing and we must applaud mm -hmm. the government for also helping bring, bring back 
somebody, I mean, some of the investors to invest in the entire 22-year yeah. life, lifetime exactly. of the mines. And I hope exactly. that this will help bring back mm -hmm. some economic activity in the Obwasi mm -hmm. and its environs. Right. We, we've been joined by Duke Mensa Poku from the City Newsroom. Duke, how are you? I'm well. Right. Grateful that you join us. Let's move straight to the first issue today is the Obwasi mine bouncing back. Now, be, beyond the fact that it's come back, let's look at the local economy, the local people, and how to manage their expectations. Because obviously expectations are that uh, these 3,500 jobs that the mine is expected to create or to offer, they should get a, a chunk of this, how do we manage the expectation of the locals with respect to the Obuasi mine bouncing back? Well, I must say I had the opportunity to go to Obuasi. I've been to Obuasi once all my life. Mm -hmm. That was in two, 2006, yeah. when uh, because the Kumasi Sports Stadium had been closed down, yeah. um, the inter-schools and colleges had to be held in Obuasi. So we went to learn clear for the sports, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the games. And after that, I had the opportunity to go around that town or Boasi, the community, with, yeah. with one of my friends, my classmates, who, I mean, grew up there. And I must say I was very disappointed mm -hmm. for a city that, or a town that had witnessed the mining of gold, mm -hmm. and we know the value of gold exactly. worldwide for and internationally. For over 100 years. For over 100 years, the kind of things I saw, mm -hmm. with the exception of a particular place that the locals call, I think, St. Jonah, where you have all the officials mm -hmm. of um, the Anglo -Gold. Anglo Gold and then other, um, the other ancillary works associated yes, with the mining live. The other parts of Obuasi, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not in the best of shapes at all. Mm -hmm. Very bad roads and, and, and all of that, and mm -hmm. I mean, dust all over the town, Tutuka and the rest. So I, 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 I was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Seeing the major part of Obwasi, looking that way after so many years of, 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 of mining, and, and I mean, I asked myself, what, what, what then is, is, is the relevance in exactly. the use of putting your natural resources at the disposal of the rest of the country mm -hmm. if yourself you cannot really benefit, benefit from, from, it. from all that, that is going on. It's good news that the, the mine um, has mm -hmm. bounced back because it was virtually a dead, a dead town after, you know, Sure. When when the when the mine the mine was shut yeah. and I mean it's 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 good at least some form of level of income generation would would, would, would be back mm -hmm. but there are some things that critically needs needs to be looked at first is the issue of security because mm -hmm. remember um, even after when the, the the mine was on a downward trend various groups or let me say I mean the the youth some youth mm -hmm. in the town because knowing the the geography of the area quite well, and then some of them being former miners, organized themselves and started, you know, doing illegal Ill illegal mining for some of the concessions. Mm -hmm. Reason why Anglo Gold, one of the reasons they decided to fold up. Right. So the security has 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 to be tightened to ensure that this does not come back, mm -hmm. especially for those who are not. Of course, the mines coming back will not employ everybody. Mm -hmm. So for those who will not find jobs within you know, the framework of Anglo Gold mm -hmm. and all the other works, those who will be doing other things apart from the real mining work yeah. and every other thing that's associated with that, do not find themselves back mm -hmm. to do this illegal mining, which is done sometimes with very heavily armed people. Mm -hmm. And then earlier on alluded to the, the, the tragic death of exactly. one of the um, officials or officers of, of, of Anglo Gold in, in, in that regard. And then mm -hmm. secondly, I think the people need to, because at a point in time, many people felt that this was the end of gold mining in Obuasi. Mm -hmm. So now that it's back, the people really need to feel the impact of, exactly. of what is happening. That's why it's, it's good news that a, com a community trust fund has been set up mm -hmm. where every ounce of gold that is taken out of Obuasi, $2, two is reserved for, yeah, for, that for, fund. for that fund. I, 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 I wish it, it would go up because if you look at how mining has transformed place, a place like Johannesburg, which yeah. is which is a quick call of Obwasi in terms Obwasi. of gold mining. Exactly. And diamonds are transformed mm -hmm. uh, Habroni in Botswana. And, and you compare that to Obwasi, it's, 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 it's yeah. very sad. So the people who will be in charge of this trust fund should ensure that at least Obwasi becomes an example mm -hmm. of what uh, mining can do t in transforming um, a, 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 place. a place. So apart from just, I mean, for many years, the only benefit the people of Obwasi were getting was 
was the fact that Ash, Ash, Ashanti Gold or Boise Goldfields then mm -hmm. was doing very well in yeah. the Ghana Premier League, and that was the only source of happiness. <laughs> you, you apart just from that, that in. yes, <laughs> apart from that, I mean, apart from that, n nothing really. So right. it, it really has to, mm -hmm. they, they really have to, at this time around, get mm -hmm. it right and ensure that the people are well. They, they get to benefit properly, and mm -hmm. the positive impact of mining yeah. is yeah is, is, is felt. Now, beyond the fund that you uh, mentioned, the president also uh, charged the management of the mine to lift the people of Boise out of poverty. How do we ensure that this does not go down as just one of the usual rhetorics, but then physically on the ground, this is felt? I think that, uh, like Duke mentioned, the two dollars per. Mm -hmm. Per ounce, I think it's not enough. Right? Yeah, actually, it, go up, it was established yeah, in 2011, mm -hmm. so it's been there before the the, the mines uh, were shut. Mm -hmm. But now that it's bouncing back, now that we know that the prices of mm -hmm. gold on the international market is doing far better mm -hmm. than it was at that time. Uh, previously, it is important that Just we are looking at it. It could go to some works. fights and all of that. Right. But beyond that, I think it's also important for the management to. Mm -hmm always have stakeholder consultations uh, with mm -hmm. the, the locals, the chiefs, yeah. and the local development partners. And it's not just a problem of Obwasi. When you go to most of the areas where natural resources are mined or produced in Ghana, mm -hmm. you see that there is a huge gap between the companies that are investing in the area and the local authorities. Mm -hmm. So you go to a place, Duke mentioned the roads of Obwasi, very bad, very terrible yeah, conditions. That's true. You go to even our cocoa producing mm -hmm. areas, and you realize that the, the impact, no the situation is, is, is not different. Mm -hmm. Some of them do not even have schools. Yeah. So it tells you that when the investors come, mm -hmm. they are, they are, they are focused. Their priority is always about how to make the, the returns mm -hmm. on their investment. Yeah. But as part of their corporate social responsibilities, mm -hmm. they should engage with the local authorities and invest heavily in education, in health, in infrastructure, so that you don't go to Obwasi and, and have problems with mm -hmm. road when, I mean, huge sums of money, it's, it's literally got black, black money, gold, yeah. is, 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 is gotten from that, that environment. So mm -hmm. we need to engage with the local authorities yeah. more than we are doing now. And mm -hmm. government must ensure that, that that takes place. Issues of royalties. Mm -hmm. I'm told that some of these companies pay royalties to, to, to the traditional authorities. But you see, the way and manner in which it is done, mm -hmm. we have a system where our traditional authorities, it is very difficult to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. So you can go to an area where you have a very rich, wealthy, and powerful chief, but the area lacks some very basic social I mean, amenities. Mm -hmm. So it, it is because we, we are in a system where you cannot go just the way you can do to your politicians and hold them accountable for mm -hmm. how much taxpayers' money exactly. and how it is being spent and all that. It's difficult for us to hold our traditional authorities accountable, right. I mean, to, to, to some of these, these things. So issues, it yeah. is important that instead of just paying the royalties, mm -hmm. the companies take projects, health, education, infrastructure, and say that, mm -hmm. I want to do this for the community that we are doing this mining or we are getting this, go uh, this mm -hmm. gold, we are getting this cocoa from. When the companies begin to do these CSR pro projects in these mm -hmm. areas, I, I think that uh, it, it will help mm -hmm. and, and you'll see some more development than, than we are seeing now. Right. The, the mine is expected to produce some 35,000 tons per annum for the next 10 years. Now, my interest is in local collaborations or local content. Some 2,500 employees are expected to be taken on board, most of whom we expect to be Ghanaian. Now, we're looking at the ancillary services. How do we position ourselves as a people, policy-wise, uh, individual, to, to benefit of this? Because this is Ghana. Obuase is here in Ghana, belongs to Ghanaians. And so how do we position ourselves as a people to benefit of this project? Thankfully, the there's a local content policy, which I know is being um, seriously implemented, especially in the oil and gas sector. Right. So that is, that, that is I mean, that's the main thing. Once but policy... Even there, not to catch you, but even in the oil and gas sector, we've heard of the issues where some uh, local players are complaining that their uh, counterparts, the experts, are being paid better than they are. But, I mean, that's experts being paid at a certain price or mm -hmm. being pegged at a certain price is an industry practice worldwide. Mm -hmm. And also, because oil and gas is, is, is something that is quite new, I mean, even until recently, we didn't have many institutions in the country yeah. training people into, to, to go into to that sector. Gas, yeah. and, and even the few who were trained, most of them found, yeah, I mean, a top 
petroleum engineers at a point they had to even be trained in Nigeria, yeah. Ghanaians, and they ended up in the Gulf area, yeah. Saudi Arabia and Co. Qatar working for, for those countries. Just say uh, oil and gas is less than 10 years in Ghana. Yeah. So these are some feeding challenges that you will face. Obviously, but that's not the same, up. that's not the same with 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 um with the, with, the, with, the, with gold mining. Exactly. Obwasi over hundred, close to hundred years. Mm -hmm. We've had we've had UMAT for how many years? Training mining engineers mining, yes. and all of that. So that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, mm -hmm. apart from the 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 highly skilled mm -hmm. force in yeah. terms of those who I mean who would do their the the for want of a better mm -hmm. word the techno the technocratic work in terms of the mining mm -hmm. there are other let me say semi skilled jobs yeah. the miners the drivers uh, the people who would provide catering services those who would be and, and and other things that that would be associated with it this shouldn't it shouldn't look far the local content policy should be implemented strictly so that at least in every home in Obuasi you have somebody who works in the mines either as a miner either as an engineer, either as a driver, yeah. or somebody somewhere in there mm. who is directly benefiting directly yeah. from that the mind right. coming back. And, and mm. we know how our society works. One person has mm. a lot of dependence, so that yeah. the trickle-down effect of this mind being back in work mm. would, 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 would be of benefit yeah. to everybody in, in that society. Mm. That, that, that way, the people would know that, indeed, they are really benefiting from it. Apart from the corporate... A social responsibility that I, I won't take that away. Uh, I mean, from Anglo Gold yeah. as one of the best so really basic schools, yeah. one of the best basic schools in the Ashanti yeah. region is, is the AGA yes. school, which has yeah. trained a lot of, I mean, I mean, top top people in in yeah. in, in, yeah. in Ghana. That school, so we won't take that away from them. But apart from that, corporate social responsibility, which they would do mm -hmm. as an organization. Now the, there is a community trust fund, and then the local content policy should not be should not be mm -hmm. should, should not be left in in abeyance. It should really be. Be implemented just as the Petroleum Commission is yeah. ensuring that it, it is done and done properly in the oil and gas, gas sector, industry. even with all of these challenges. Mm. The authorities, those who are supposed to be regulating this, should ensure that it's done properly mm. in Obwasi and then in the other mining communities and in, 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 in Ahafu, in Takwa and Dama and the rest. Yeah. Where all of these things are happening because at the end of the day, the resources belong to, belong to the people. Right. You're still watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all our social media handles. It's at City TV GH. You can also send in your WhatsApp messages on 0550 Use the code plus 233 if you are outside of Ghana. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we have more on mining. This time we're going into the issue of Galamsey. You're welcome back. You're still watching Breakfast Daily on CTTV. This is the news review segment. And uh, our, our, our well, official guest, I should say, yeah. is now here with us. He has joined in. Uh, thank you very much, Duke Menzo Boku, for sitting in for Mr. Asafo and Jay. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Grateful thank that you. you joined us. We've discussed, of course, the opening or the reopening of the Anglo Gold Ashanti mine. And uh, we're moving forward, but still in the mining sector. And. Um, we're going into Galamse now. The story is in the New Crusading Guide and, of course, on citynewsroom.com. I'm going to take a few paragraphs from citynewsroom.com and uh, read name officials responsible for the disappearance of seized excavators. Groups demand. The media coalition against illegal mining and Occupy Ghana are demanding that the government provides explanations for the disappearance of some excavators that were seized from illegal miners. Their statement stems from a comment by the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwamna Frimpong, that dozens of Galamse excavators that were seized have disappeared from the district assemblies where they were being kept. And according to the two organizations, the authorities responsible for ensuring sanity within the mining sector have failed to enforce the law. A convener of the Media Coalition Against Galamse, Ken Ashibe, said persons behind the disappearance should be named to ensure they are sanctioned. Quote, if we don't ensure that the laws that we have are working, then the impunity will continue. How come some of the excavators cannot be found? It is also important that we know which public officers or individuals are responsible for this. That is something that we need answers for, end quote, he said. This is a very serious issue, Asafo Ajay. Thank you. I mean, well, <laughs> City TV has been, uh, City FM has been part of this for the, the period that it has existed, the uh, Stop Galamse campaign. We've been going there. Then the tax force was set up. The IMCM was also set up. We've moved in there. We've seized 
excavators from illegal miners. And today we have been told that dozens of them are missing. Quick one. Let me first and foremost say a very good morning to mm -hmm. you, Adam, and then your viewers. Uh, apologize, apologizing for being late. Uh, it's because of my lateness I couldn't get a toffee for the birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe after you can here, always get it after. You can always get, get it after. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, a quick one before I go to the Galamse issue, I want mm -hmm. to take a small bite at, briefly, um, briefly, briefly at the at the Obwasi thing. For mm -hmm. me, I think that the Obwasi project is 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 a promise delivered or mm -hmm. promise made, a promise delivered by the Nanandu Dankwe Kufuadu government. I remember very well about four or five years ago when we had issues, challenges with Obwasi, mm -hmm. when, the, when the town and its environs all, almost came to a halt. I mean, nothing was happening. People mm -hmm. who were living, I mean, had to move from there, go somewhere else and all that. Mm -hmm. And then remember during our campaign, Nanaru Dankwe Kufadu made one solemn promise to them that when he comes as a president, he will do everything possible within his means to revamp the Obwasi mines again. And lo and behold, it happened in 2019 and another and also to went there to commission the the new Anglo good and then the hope of the people of Ashanti. Mm -hmm. And today I'm happy that um, they are they are they are doing their first mine or they are they are they are pouring first, they are pouring yeah. first good. It's 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 so hard for feeling. It's right. I mean you cannot just underestimate what it is doing to the lives of the people there. No, when I was Wait. trying to now, about thirty five thousand people let's, let's have been employed. That's, that's, a, that's very important. About about thirty five thousand people mm -hmm. have been employed. And three thousand five hundred three thousand five hundred have 500. been employed. And you could look at the the direct and the indirect employment that exactly. is also going to create the rippling effect, the value mm -hmm. chain. You can talk about a lot of things. Great. So I agree and I commend the president for hitting hard on the community development mm -hmm. project Very so important. that the, the areas we mine can also see some development from their, their soil. Exactly. No, with the, with the Galamse issue, I think that I'm going to take a certain position. Mm -hmm. Why Which am is? I saying that? Why am I saying that? I'm, I'm doing this because I think the idea, the menstrual, the commitment, mm -hmm. the fight, the dedication by the government is commendable. Mm -hmm. Ensure that we stop this illegal mining and ensure that we, pro we protect our water bodies. We ensure that our, our people are safe, our water bodies are safe. That one is commendable. And I also commend the media houses who also, who also join the fight to ensure that it is done and it's done well. Now, my only problem is some few individuals who, who have been, I mean, set aside to ensure that some of these policies is done and done well. I mean, it is, it is not a good news mm. to hear that a seized excavator, I mean, I, I know of stories way back where excavators were burnt during mm -hmm. the NDC time and all those times. We, com we, we condemned it. So mm. for you to hear that at this point, again, we are seeing issues of missing excavators and uh, excavators we cannot find, it, 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 it's, it's disheartening. Exactly. And you ask, I mean, who are supposed to be in charge of some of these things? The government gives you a responsibility and it is your duty to ensure that it is done and done well. Right. Now, so for, for you, to, for us to wake up this morning and, and see, that, because when I read the story, you could know that, you could see that there are some points where even the district assemblies mm -hmm. wanted the excavator to do something very important mm -hmm. and beneficial to the community, like dredging, uh, what do you call it, water bodies, water ensuring bodies that uh, clearing of flats. And yes. All that. And you cannot find the excavators. It means that there are some um, irresponsible people within the community mm -hmm. who perhaps do something behind doors and then ensure that these excavators go to the people or the load their owners or I mean do something else with the excavators. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would I would I would support the call by Ken Ashibe that we investigate this mm -hmm. issue. We get to the bottom of this issue and ensure that every culprit is brought to book. Mm -hmm. Because you see when you, when you do that, I mean, the goodwill the president have, I mean, the commitment, the fight the entire nation has committed to, to ensure that we clear our, our, our water bodies and ensure that the people of this country is getting good water to drink and all that. I mean, you are still going back. We're taking, we take one step forward. You are bringing Five us back. back. Yeah, so I think that we should, we should, we should investigate this matter. Right. Ensure that those who are found corporate truth mm. will be brought to book and deal with them drastically mm. to send a clear signal to others. I believe that it is not just about the areas that have been mentioned. Mm -hmm. It might go 
beyond those areas mm -hmm. so that we will deal with all these issues, send a signal and ensure that mm -hmm. the commitment and the goodwill of the president is protected right. so that the good people of this country would, 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 would feel and see mm -hmm. the good initiative the president have mm -hmm. taken. That is, I think, what I want to say on this one. Yeah, for me, it is very sad. I don't know about you. It is very worrying coming from a minister. Earlier, somewhere last week or last two weeks, he, he said that the issue of Galamsey was resurfacing because the trial processes were slow. That's on, in one breath. Now he's come out to say that these excavators are missing. Now, mind you, these excavators were given to the district assemblies to hold in trust waiting for whatever outcome of uh, these court cases. And now we cannot find them. What does this mean to the fight against illegal mining? I think that first, uh, before I even um, answer directly to what you asked, and, uh, let me correct the uh, misinformation that my brother tried to put out. The issue of burning of excavators mm. was not an NDC problem. It's something that they did in 2017. And I recall... Mm the leadership of the Vanguard Operation Vanguard even coming out to say that they were actually provoked by the illegal, illegal miners, miners to burn their excavators mm -hmm. and that is I mean the whole country was outraged at the fact that mm -hmm. Operation Vanguard was engaging in shootings mm -hmm. and burning of excavators because we thought at the time that even if it was a court of competent jurisdiction that had convicted this individual as illegal miners of engaging mm -hmm. in criminality you could put that excavators, very expensive machines Machine, yeah. to good use, better use for the country than burning them. So he tried to make it look as if it was in NDC time. I think that <laughs> he needed to revise his note. It happened in 2017 mm -hmm. and 2018 under the NPP, led by the right. Operation Vanguard. Let, let's move away from Making from progress. Vanguard. I think mm -hmm. that this whole fight against Galamse, mm -hmm. I always commend the media mm -hmm. for leading the campaign. We, we, you know for a fact that it started with some people in the media. Then when Ken Ashibe was with Graphic, okay, graphic and then they started the campaign against mm -hmm. Galamse because we all know the adverse effects of, of mining, mining, illegal mining on, on the people, the water bodies that were yeah. damaged. In fact, when you go to most of these areas where Galamse mm -hmm. was taking place, the water bodies became, I mean, almost unusable for the people. And it was a great worry for all of us, especially when you look at the fact that at the time, Eight out of the then 10 regions mm. had problem of Galamse. So it is a problem that we needed to solve. Mm -hmm. So when the media led the campaign, all of us joined in. I was working in the media at the time. We all joined the advocacy, mm -hmm. and then government came in, showed some commitment, made some gains in 2017. But I must say that we lost the fight against Galamse from the very day the government decided not to apply sanctions or punitive measures to its officials that mm -hmm. were sabotaging the same fight. You remember, you recall the ANAS number, uh, is it the number number 13? Number 12. The, the, which one was the number 12? There was one, the number one on Galamse. On the the number 12 was, was on the football. Okay, the one that involved the, the, yes, um, um, the Charles, Bissu. Charles Bissu. The one that involved Charles mm. Bissu. The president lost a glorious opportunity to show his commitment to the fight against Galamse mm. by not sanctioning Charles Bissu. But he because, was put under investigation. I, I, what was the outcome? Mm. Because this is somebody that was caught on video. Mm. There was a video footage. What was the outcome? Even before the gentleman was put under investigation, we saw how the government demonized Anas for undertaking that investigation. So how do you encourage other media practitioners from taking up investigations in that particular area, which right. is very critical? So what happened is that these issues of the Galamse and, and how the excavators are missing, mm. I am disappointed in the minister for just coming out to announce it. Leadership is about solving problems, mm -hmm. finding solutions to problems. You are the policymaker, you are the minister of state in the sector, and you are complaining that excavators are missing. Who should find them for you? You put it in care of, of the district <laughs> assembly. When you go to every district assembly, you know who is supposed to be in charge of the excavators. Exactly. How did they vanish? Mm -hmm. What kind of a leadership are we providing in this country that the minister who is the policymaker is complaining for you and I to go and find the excavators? Yeah. Is he saying that when you go to the various district assemblies, we cannot trace the people who were responsible for this, this, this excavators and they are, van they are vanishing? Mm. The truth is that get back to the mining communities. 
The government has lost the fight against Galamse. Go and see the water bodies that they started making it. All these places. In fact, as we, as we speak today, go to all those areas and the people will tell you that the only thing that has changed was right. that government fought the Galamseers. All of a sudden, many other people are on site claiming that they have licenses from the government and they are still using the same crude methods of mining as the, as the, uh, the illegal miners were doing in the past. So nothing much has changed. Mm. Apart from the fact that when you go to the areas, I was in the western region some few months ago, mm. and the locals complained, and they mentioned some officials of the NPP, but not substantiated, so I will not put their names out, mm. as people who are holding concessions, and they have still... Are illegal or illegal? So what, the only difference is that when they come, you see the Operation Vanguard team guarding or trying to provide security now for the mining. They may have certificates, but... You see, the issue about illegal money is also, it's not simply about having certificates or not, or having license or not. It is also about the method of mining. mining yeah, exactly. So they are still using these crude methods, mm -hmm. and yet they possess licenses mm -hmm. granted them by the government in the, in the name of regularizing small-scale mining. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the same crude practices that led to the destruction of the water bodies is still it's ongoing. Still I challenge you and your team to go to these areas and undertake an investigation. Right. So government has lost the fight against Galamse. And these issues about the excavators missing, the ministers must name the district assemblies exactly. where these items are missing. Let's go after the DCEs and ensure that sanctions are applied. Mm. But you see what is happening is that when you are a president or you are a government, and for over time, you have gained notoriety for clearing your, your appointees of corruption. What they do is that it emboldens them to continue these practices. So if I was a district chief, uh, chief executive and I see Charles Bissu, who is the secretary to the uh, inter-ministerial inter committee, inter committee mining, yeah. escaping sanction mm -hmm. after even caught on, 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 on video footage, what I would do is that knowing very well that when I am also caught selling excavator, I will engage in it. Hmm. Or, or it's giving right, the excavator back to the people. Quick 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 uh, uh, who are sabotaging the fight against the Galamse? Okay. Why is it that no single You admit that you've lost the fight. There's, there's I, I, some level of sabotage yeah. somewhere. I mean, because if I, we've gone ahead to make arrests, we've gone ahead to seize equipment for illegal mining, and today we come back and say we cannot find these equipment, then obviously I don't know, but we're failing at somewhere. All of, all of a sudden, NDC is the spokesperson and executives and officials assume that Ghana be started in 2017. Mm. 7 January. Mm -hmm. That is what they think. Do you remember Chairman Wuntumi of the Asante region? He's the current Asante regional chairman. Mm -hmm. Then the chairman for, I think, uh, I mean, uh, one of the constituencies in Asante region, who had about 15 of his excavators bent. Was that one 2017 or 2018? That, so if that, you don't know the story, if you don't know the story, don't, no, no, hold on. No, 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 I'll come on. If, come, if you don't, <coughs> if you don't know the story, the don't come correcting when you don't know. Because chairman want to means excavators were not bent during 2016 or 2018. But that's that number point, one. That's number one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, let's, let's, right. so, so, so let's, let's... Now, where are we coming from mm. to this point? We're coming from a place where for over eight years in your government, your tenure of office, at Tamils, the late John Dramani Mahama, mm. you never did anything to ensure that our water bodies are clean or, 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 or this illegal mining are dealt with or, deal, or, or managed very well. He never did anything. It took a bold president, Anado Danko Kufuado, to initiate this fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy you made a point that we made some gains. Clearly, fantastic move, we made some gains and it was commendable. Mm -hmm. Now, let us not uh, 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 miss the point that the fight against Galamsey it's a collective responsibility. Right, it is. If you think that it is Nanado Danko Kufado who will move from the Flagstaff House and go and police the Galamse in Obuasi, in what, 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 you are lying to yourself as a country. So when we are discussing this issue, let us not be so much partisan mm -hmm. and, and making pedestrian statements, trying to, you know, no, you know, you don't fight Galamse with this, this attitude. Mm. Collectively, we make sure that the leader, people, we show leadership, which government is doing, and then the people also become responsible. Right. When uh, uh, Operation Vanguard moves from Accra, mm -hmm. and they get to, let's say, uh, 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 what do you call it, 
the tow boot in his home. And somebody calls them, the tow boot person calls them. And they tell I've seen the Vanguard people come in and move. How would the Vanguard people stop the operations? Mm. It's a collective thing. Then we have to conscientize the people to understand that, look, we also have to help in the situation. That's not deleting the point. Look, these people are quick to mention Charles Bissou, Charles Bissou, and Nas and all that. I laugh. It is simple. Look, we have state institution. Hmm? Clearing the former president John Dramani Mahama in the Kanazori deal. That mm -hmm. one, you find no problem with it when right. the state institution clears a then sitting president. Mm -hmm. But when the state institution now clears uh, 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 Charles Bishu, you have a problem with it. Selective amnesia. So what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. has, a, a nurse, uh, has Charles Bishu not gone through the, the, the trials? He has. And are you telling me that? And again, with this uh, Charles Bishu and Anas video, it yeah. was clear. The position of government was clear. Produce the raw footage. Let us do the investigation. Mm -hmm. Because you can't tell me that you saw somebody taking, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 money in, 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 a, in a footage. For that reason, we should persecute, uh, uh, persecute the person. You don't do that. So that one is simple. Well, let us know the issues and deal with the issues as it is. But you see, like I said, I am on the position and the side mm -hmm. that, look, if it's not good, it's not good. Right. I will never support anybody who would who, who government will seize an excavator yeah. and will go behind government, sell, give it out, or do whatever it so is. How do so we investigations, find the so investigations, investigations, we must investigate these so issues. Can I, yes, we uh, must investigate yes, this issue. Yeah, and yeah, that is important. Very, 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 I think it's important for us to have some maximum respect for our viewers. The truth, and your producers can check. When the NDC was in power in 2015, one to me's excavators were only seized. And that is why on record, you don't lie like this. You don't lie like this. You don't lie like this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is an open secret. Like public for everybody to know. It was public for everybody to know. So what are you talking about? No, if it is, no, if it is, no, hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 let's ask a logical question. If it was seized, was it returned back to him to be? Let's move on. If it was so seized, no, was it so, returned so, back so to, point, to me? So, if so what are you talking about? So where is it? No, I'm telling you it was bad because, 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 because I know. So that is why I find that. I'm telling that's you it was bad because I know. So you don't come and say you are correcting something where you don't even know. That is why even in 2017, one to me is on record to have asked all those whose excavators were bent mm -hmm. to come to now you admit government. government now you admit now you admit that it was bent thank you now you admit that it was bent now you admit so what argument are you making now so what argument are you making everyone to me excavator was not bent will you come back to call those people were bent it was just nothing to me a fleet of excavators were bent so what are you talking about no my problem is you coming to correct when you don't have anything to correct I kept quiet and allowed you make a lot of you can go ahead with a lot of misinformation you can go <laughs> so, 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 so the records is that mm -hmm. to me even in 2017 was so angry that his own government was burning excavators yeah, and he guys. called on those That's whose yeah. excavators were burnt to, to take the government on and sue government. Now the issue about finding excavator, finding the people responsible mm -hmm. for the missing excavators, like I said, it is the responsibility of government. Now right. when the ministry and trusted those excavators in the hands of the district assemblies. assemblies. They didn't just go park them at the car park of the district assemblies. Certainly, the keys were given to, to individual. some individuals. Yeah. We should learn how to let people take responsibility for their actions. But that Wait, argument, we are both on the same page. This is because with that one, with this one, right. we are both on the same page. We are both on the same page. That's why today, as we that's speak, that's as, we speak mm -hmm. as how we speak today, you have about four hundred tricycles missing in, in, in the northern mm -hmm. region, and you can still see, not find those. You see, because you have you see, he's now raising. He's not letting raise argument, raise points, allegations, and just move with this four hundred tricycles. So four hundred tricycles. The ministry, the ministry, and the Special I, development. I, I am scared. Um, minister, hold minister, honourable, honourable, Howard Kumse came out clearly to tell you that that 400 motorbike tricycles were not missing. Let's let's they were distributed to NDC MPs to give it to their people. Police station, party, branch executives. That is what he introduced. You should have told him not to introduce those ones. You distribute tricycles to your people and now come back to say tricycles. I'm moving into the issue of the new protesters. The eminent advisory committee is to meet the EC. You don't make points and just run away like that. Be thinking you would. Now an inter-party advisory committee IPAC meeting will be held later today. Now I'm reading from the citynewsroom.com. Yes. An inter-party advisory committee IPAC meeting will be held later today, Thursday in Accra, over the controversy surrounding the electoral commission's EC's decision 
to compile new voters register ahead of election 2020. The meeting is being convened at the behest of the EC's eminent advisory committee, which had called for an all-inclusive engagement on the issue. Adam, I suspect you'll be at this meeting yourself? No, um, you every political party no. has uh, representatives, representatives on IPAC. On IPAC. Mm -hmm. uh, but just a quick one. I think that uh, today's meeting, not uh, without any disrespect to the eminent advisory committee mm -hmm. and to other members of I, uh, IPAC, IPAC, I think that for me, uh, it is not going to be a meeting that some of us will have high regard for, especially when the electoral commissioner this current electoral commission has a certain record of disregarding IPAC. How is it that for the first time in the history of this country, mm -hmm. you have a critical issue as the discussions on introduction of or compiling a new register put on AOB, no political party had the opportunity to mm -hmm. comment on it, and the EC took an arbitrary position on compiling a new register. When they realized that the kitchen was hot, mm. the political parties, other stakeholders, over 18 credible CSOs, media houses, were against the compilation. Right. They ran to the EAC. The EAC is now going to have an extended mm -hmm. meeting to have a discussion. For me, my disappointment in the Electoral Commission, and why this meeting for me today, for me, I think it will be a useless meeting, is that at the time that the EAC, you set up your own... Uh, uh, an eminent advisory committee mm -hmm. to advise you. They advised you that hold on with discussions on the compilation of a new register, bring in the political parties who are your critical stakeholders. Let's 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 have a consensus on it and then we can go ahead with the compilation. While waiting, then you announced the procedures, you announced the dates and how you intend to compile the register. What it means is that even before you meet the EAC and the political parties at IPAC, you have already made up your mind that you will not back down on the demands for a new company. They have taken an entrenched position. Right. And I can assure them that the NDC has also taken an entrenched position. All the parties that are part of the inter-party resistance against the new register, we have also made up our mind. And that is why when we went to the demonstration in Kumasi, if you yeah. listen to our general secretary, we announced that with regards to the advice given by the EAC, mm. we have decided to halt whatever mass protests or actions we intended to take. Great. Let's go into the meeting and come back. Great. Then, only after Kumasi, on Monday, daily graphic, on Monday, in fact, even before the, 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 the EC announced the date, the April 18th date, mm. John Guedu was the first person to have announced the date on a sister and another uh, a sister station. Mm. So what, what, what is the <coughs> that's, that's right. So, so, so the, the whole meeting is about gimmicks. It's as if they have made up their mind and they are well, coming. Well, but I can tell them easy. they will face well, the well, biggest easy. resistance today easy. at the meeting. They will face resistance easy. if they don't back down on their demands right. to compile a new register. It is clear to me mm -hmm. the inconsistency of the NDC. He, he made the point that the eminent committee advised the EC. I wanted them to be frank to you and the viewers. Mm -hmm. When did the eminent uh, 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 committee called on the EC mm -hmm. to engage the stakeholders? He called before they went to Kumasi. Right. So if you are calling the electoral commission eh, to heed or to listen to the advice of the eminent committee, why didn't you stop Kumasi mm -hmm. if you respect the eminent committee? You go to Kumasi, you come back and you want to make a point here. That aside, so it, it clearly tells you the hypocrisy of the NDC. Let's put that one aside. Number two, the eminent committee are just an advisory body to the electoral commission. Right. So let us not assume and think that it is the eminent committee who will tell the electoral commission what to do. He mentioned CSOs. I have the statement of the CSOs here. Mm. Look, and for me, the point that CSOs raise, I find them so bereft of of, mm. of, of of a lot of things. Right. You mentioned it at least. Yes, said, the coalition also proposed that instead of embarking on a new mass registration exercise in acquisition of a Which new register, is this? that's the CEO's statement. Mm. Uh, the, uh, CSO's yes. statement, yes. He said, the EC should consult the National Identification Authority mm. for, an require, for the required data. For me, I think that the, what the Electoral Commission is doing mm. and what the uh, uh, NIA is doing is entirely different. Mm. And for the purposes of this election, we don't need the NIA. Because I registered for a national identification card. Mm -hmm. I didn't provide my constituency. 
I didn't provide uh, where I vote, my police station number or my uh, police station. Yeah. So this, this how do you? Sure no, 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 no. Let me make a lot of points. Let me make a lot of points. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. No, that entrenched position of the NDC. No, my brother, let's deal with that entrenched position of the NDC. Let them know and understand that Ghana don't belong to them, and then they should understand that if you are taking an entrenched position, you don't call the shot for anybody in this country. The electoral commission has a mandate, and you said it. The meeting will decide today. The meeting. No, but he has already given you the verdict of the meeting. Well, that he has given you the verdict of the and meeting. And, 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 so and so I am not may, may do what? A national officer is giving you a verdict of the meeting. You are telling the police will change. A national officer. Let us hold on and wait So it, it is clear. You know what it means. You know what it means. It is clear that the NDC have already decided. And they know. But there is that yes, so, 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 me, I would even wish they don't even go at all. I would even wish they don't even go at all. Thank you very much. Guys, uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I would you respond to that, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. No, but I need to 30 take seconds. Some quick no, no, I also have 30 seconds to make. I mean, I mean this message. is the statement yeah, of their former president, John Dramani, man. So I also have 30 seconds to make. From Positive Change Medina says, as long as Ekufu remains the president of this nation, the fight against Galamse and corruption can never be a thing of the past. John Muhammad's second coming is full of hope and development. Uh, this one says, good morning to all viewers of CTTV. With respect to the Anglo Gold coming back, it is good news, but I will entreat it should be in a right direction. This is from Lutrot Jr. Inosu. Abdul Razak Ahmed from Ahafo says, good morning to you, Commander Adam. The only way for Anglo Gold Ashanti to uplift the living standards of the ordinary people of Obuasi is to ensure nepotism. That's not a phase. It's it's ugly face in the institution. Anglo Gold Ashanti will go a long way only to enrich uh, the people of Obuasi. And yes, it's been a very interesting discussion this morning. Uh, Adam Agbana. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm thinking this was your birthday edition of the breakfast. <laughs> Deputy National Youth Organizer of NDC. Thank you very much. And of course, Nana Kwame Asafweje is an administrator of Oh, but you started, I, I came to meet you here. I mean, we, we, we no, I came, this, I, came to, I came to meet you here. I'm supposed is, to end um, the program. That's, 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 Thank you very much. Guys. So, me, for me, I don't understand this, my brother. When you were in government, when you were in government, you supported everything the Electoral Commission did. We never, we never resisted. We never resisted. Oh, you mean, we have been in the queue. Thank you. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't forget, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily. And of course, you can find us on all social media handles. It's uh, CTTVGH. The number to send in your WhatsApp messages is 0550-585832. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the show. Do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.